Hello again and welcome to The Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To all new subscribers, old subscribers, you're equally welcome and I'm glad to have you here with me today. Please check the three dots menu at the top or look along the bottom row until you see a cog icon. Click that, click the word quality and then upgrade the quality of the video to 720p or 1080p. I always have to do this because even though I'm, rec I'm recording in 1080p, for some reason it takes a little while until YouTube will finally allow the video to render in that way. So you're just going to have to help yourself in the meantime. Today I am reading a prophetic word from the Lord that is very recent. I'm still doing the America series. And this prophetic word is called desolations are determined. So what is desolation? Um, the word desolate actually means to, it speaks of a state whereby emotionally one is devastated. One is absolutely left without, as the Bible says in the King James, and help. To be desolate means that everything material to life, everything material, not only to Christian life, not only to righteousness and godliness, but even things material to daily life and daily sustenance and daily existence has been removed and the human being is utterly without and help. So in the Bible, when the Lord is talking to, for instance, a disobedient Israel, and he says to them, I will make this place a desolation. This is always the strongest and harshest type of judgment and the strongest and har harshest type of punishment that God can pronounce on a person, a people, a nation, or even the world. And what God is saying here is, this is a blow against your existence. This is a direct strike from my hand. No matter what I use, no matter who I use to bring forth this punishment, I need you to know that because I, Yah, am life and the greatest of all beings, uncreated, with no father and no mother, with no direct point or origin, in time. I am the one speaking and I am the one saying that I will punish you and you shall be made desolate. God has no mom. God has no dad. God has no point of origin in time. Every single other religion on this earth is centered around a person, a pantheon, which means a group of gods or something that when you trace them back to origin point, they have a Genesis point. And usually when you dig brothers and sisters, you will find that it is in the mind of man. But God exists outside the often vain imaginations of us, his creation. He was not created for us by us because we need something to worship. God is the one who made all things that are. And on this channel, I stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I will say what the Lord God has given me to say. And my prayer is that as I come across reading the things, sharing the words and the admonitions that God has given me, that if even one person out there would be willing to set aside their personal opinion, be willing to just take a little time, listen to these videos. You don't even have to share them if you don't want to share them. That's up to you. But if you will just take the time for yourself to hear these words that are not coming from some random person in New York City, random though I may be, but are coming from the Heavenly Father to speak to his church first, then to speak to the nation of America, then to speak to all the nations and the world at large about what things shall come and what things shall be in the end times, you may find that there is something on this channel worth hearing, worth listening to, and worth paying attention to because God is sharing his heart here and we would do well to listen. So today's prophecy is part of a series that has been going on for quite a while. This is the America series. I've been doing it for a couple of months and I've already shared, shared and given a caveat. I don't see any end in sight because even as I give the prophecies that I have received from the Lord, 
uh, concerning the nation of the United States since the year 2012 until now, God sometimes gives me four or five dreams in a night about America. I still am receiving dreams from the Lord even now in February 2021 to the point that I wake up and write it down and sleep and will go immediately into another dream and wake up and write that down and sleep and this cycle can continue until whatever time the Lord is done uh, giving me his messages for just that one day. So I have not even updated everything current that I've received on the blog, but I'm trying to go methodically and uh, thematically. Um, so we're still in the America series and I think we're going to be here, parked here for quite a bit. Today's prophecy is part of an eight part series of prophecies that I have received from the Lord that are entitled Desolations Are Determined. And this one is called Desolations Are Determined America, part eight. I received this on February 8th, 2021. And even though the desolation series is has been talking about the world at large, most of the other desolation series were dealing with very serious themes, brothers and sisters. Um, I think desolations are determined part one had a very strong imagery from the Lord. And in that prophecy, I just saw death. I saw how the death of the end times will be. And I saw how God will separate the lives of humanity on this planet into only two bundles. Those bundles will be the righteous and the unrighteous. I saw the Lord God himself calling for a harvest of the earth. And that harvest was none other than the pale horse death and people began to die in record numbers excuse me people began to die in record numbers and they died in only two ways the righteous and the unrighteous and i saw the the souls of the whole earth being bundled up into these huge bales of hay and some made it and a very large um, group did not. So the Desolation series also covers uh, rewards of God. This, pro this prophetic channel does not unfortunately have a lot of positive prophecies. Um, I catch a lot of flack for that, but uh, thankfully um, due to the training that I have received with, with God, just walking so closely with God in the last 20 years, um, I hope that I have become flack proof and I can still keep my joy no matter what people say. Because the work that I do, I know that I'm called directly by the Lord Jesus, my King Yeshua, to do this. And so I can't be moved by the opinions of man who say, oh, the words are too harsh. They're not my words. So there's no way that I can tone them up or tone them down so that the general audience is happy. Believe it or not, this is not a movie. So um, the Desolation series covers rewards. I saw God giving, um, I think in Desolations are Determined Part 2, I saw God giving the nations of the earth rewards and they were very excited. One nation that was rewarded by God was the nation of Germany. But one nation that refused to change their ways and was a very disobedient child was the nation of America. And because of that, Jesus, who was pinning medals on the chests of the little ones, he depicted the nations. Imagine the nations that think they're so powerful. We have got guns. We've got nuclear weapons. We've got soldiers. We've got this Air Force, Navy, tanks. Jesus sees them as children. They were depicted as little boys and girls. And the United States was depicted as a very dirty and um, angry little child who would not come near Jesus as he was calling the other nations. And she did not receive, or should I say in that vision, depicted as a, as a dirty little Huck Finn kind of kid, did not receive any rewards. So the Desolation series has been going on for quite some time. It has even covered... Um, Things to come that are not of this earth. I have not yet reached that series. That's going to be far in the future, I think, unless God changes the timetable. But this particular one came recently, February the 8th, and it's completely about America. The manner scripture is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, and it's called the narrow way. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go in by it. 
because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it. I also took another translation. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it. And I was moved to just Google these words. I think one of the reasons that we, we don't really digest the Bible properly is because once you've had even a basic education, you pretty much assume that you know what words mean. And so when you read words, they tend to just come in at a, at a surface level. And then you read them at a surface level. You walk again, wide is the gate, straight is the, is the way, narrow is the way. And then you walk away and you're like, okay, wide gate, straight gate, narrow gate. Okay, I get it. But one of the things that God has taught me is that when you take the words of scripture apart and you humble yourself and just go to your good friend Google and look them up, the scripture will open itself up to you and begin to really release its perfume into you and sink into you when you realize what God is saying. And when I went to look for difficult, it said hard to do, hard to make, hard to carry out, hard to deal with hard to manage, hard to overcome, arduous, challenging, exacting, which means very tough and demanding. And the word straight, not straight, but S-T-R-A-I-T, means a narrow space or passage. So a straight is a very thin piece of land that may exist in geography or a very thin piece of water that a ship usually is not advised to pass through because when ships get in the middle they'll be smashed on either side the water in straits are very turbulent and dangerous it also says a close fitting entryway so a narrow packet passage then it says a limited situation limited circumstances or limited resources something very strict something rigorous, something narrow. And I said, look at these definitions and see if they match the teachings and the requirements of modern Christianity. See if they match what you find the usual YouTube pastors with 31 million followers telling you. Do they present to you a, de a demanding and rigorous form of Christianity? Do they, do they present to you anything that even lets you know for a second that there might be more to following these Jesus, this Jesus, than what you see in a, in a catchy 31 minute video? So this was a scripture that the Lord gave me. And then he spoke to me direct instructions and I'm going to read these instructions. This is the instruction of the Lord God to me today. Write and say, I'm against the people of this nation and I will not relent concerning her judgments. Because she has rejected me from being God over her and has given herself over to idols and the foul practice of idol worship, including the murder of children for power and the ritual sacrifices of human flesh to appease terrestrial powers that rule in these borders. I, the Lord, am taking my hand off of America and I will leave her to her own devices. Moreover, I will whistle for my captains from the north. I will raise up a destroyer after them and their lands and treasures will be taken from them in spoils of war until there is nothing left. As I said to you, and I'll say to them, because he does say this to me all the time, this shall be called a land of desolations. From east to west and north to south, thus saith the Lord, desolations are determined and so will they fall on America. The Lord gave a command. He said, build a camp against it completely. Let none of them escape. Repay her according to her works, according to all she has done, do unto her. For she has been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. This is the end of the message. And the Lord was angry when he gave me this message because it came right in the middle of my workday. I was actually doing something else. 
and he came to me and he said, write and say. And I was sharing with the people in the blog that usually the Lord will communicate with me in a dream or a vision or very frequently, every day in fact, just on a face-to-face -face basis. Celestial, did you know this? Celestial, be aware of that. And I mark all these things in my journal. I keep them. But unless the Lord says it is a prophecy that is meant to be brought to the Master's Voice blog, check the URL below and you'll find um, you'll find the blog address and you can go there and read everything that you find in these videos. It's best to read because it's the longest lasting understanding. It's much better than a video. But God would say these things to me and I write them down. But when it's a prophecy, I will record it in my journal and then I will bring it to the blog as and when the Holy Spirit leads. But when God comes to me and tells me, write and say, when he comes to me and he tells me, open the blog right now and write it. Then there's this process that skips the time of my journal, skips the time of me being able to say, Lord, what do you mean in this? And I bring that prophecy as a direct proclamation, fresh from the mouth of the Lord to the people or the person that he is directing it from. And I was saying that I really, at times like that, I'm given pause to thought for thought and just think, I wonder what has angered God so greatly today. But I don't think about it too deeply because there are so many things, excuse me, please. There are so many things that can upset the Lord. His eyes rove over the entire earth and God sees all things. So if God is even watching someone abusing a child, there's so much child sodomy that goes on in this country. And I'm just going to say it. Children are not just touched in the upper parts of their body here. They are methodically abused in their back parts. There are prophecies that I have like that. One extremely graphic one that really punched me in my soul called drowning. That will be part of um, the sin series. So not for now. But children are methodically sodomized here. And what people don't understand is that the practice of sodomy greatly, greatly, greatly breaks the soul. We don't really understand what the soul is. We don't really understand how God put it together. All we really know is from the Genesis account where it says that God uh, fashioned all that was, he spoke all that was made into being. And then for Adam, he had a different methodology. He fashioned him and then breathed from his own mouth into Adam and then man became as the Bible says a living soul but the soul is also like a fortified city the soul has gates and when you break the gates of the soul this is how you get a lot of demonic entry a lot of demonic interference a lot of demonic influence whether living in the person or outside of the person and America has a methodical a different secret pandemic going on, and that is sodomizing her children, male and female. There are children in this nation that are offered up for ritual sacrifice all the time, and that includes the children getting eaten. If you don't believe me, you don't have to believe me. I live a pretty ordinary life here in New York City, have a day job just like everybody else, and therefore, there's absolutely no time for me to go outside and be Inspector Gadget to make these things up and bring them to you. Everything that I share here is revealed to me in real time and sometimes extremely distressing and graphic detail from the Lord. I'm going to link a prophecy below by the name of Blood to Drink. In that prophecy, God showed me what happens to children. I've seen adults rich people especially, but also it takes place from every strata really, even in ordinary homes. People do this to their own birth children. But I've seen wealthy people um, gathered together in a ring, sodomizing children, watching the sodomy taking place. I've seen little ones gathered with them, um, being forced to watch this take place. And I've never seen children that terrified. And I know that the reason those children are terrified is the, the tragedy of watching someone who's tiny like you go through that screaming, bleeding. And then not only that, knowing that whenever the adults are finished with that child, whether that child lives or dies, you might be next. These are children. Their concerns should be 
about whether Power Rangers is coming on at 2 or 3 o'clock today. They should be wondering why their mother is buying bran cereal instead of Cocoa Puffs. They should not be wondering why they are being raped. So to all who consistently say that the sins of America are no different, no worse or no better than others, I just want to let you know here on the Master's Voice End Times Prophecy blog, that's the full name, that there is a person called Jesus Christ and he disagrees with you very strongly. I'm sent by the Lord to announce the following scriptures. The nation of Russia will be here. This is not scripture, I'll read it shortly. God says that you should not forget that for what you have done to the children, for how you have aborted them because you were seeking your own sexual pleasure and gratification. God says to the women who have sex in their menstrual blood, something that frustrates me greatly because I'm a woman and I really don't need to see that mess on any day of the week that ends with why. To the men who commit sodomy in this nation, to all those who give themselves over to various forms of perversion with animals, man with man, woman with woman, adult with child, father with biological child, mother with biological child, to those in the highest levels of power who have betrayed the trust of the people of this nation and usurped their right to be free, who have fed them sand, says the Spirit of the Lord. You have fed my people sand. You have fed them sand and told them that you were giving them bread. They are hungry, they are impoverished, and this too is the punishment for their iron neck and their turtle-backed hearts. The back of a turtle is as hard as the back of my lip gloss. It's a keratin shell that builds up over the turtle forever, and you can't break it. It doesn't even feel fire. If you have a heart like that, God is saying that you are past the point of no return. And this is why this scripture here that I read before. Build a camp against it completely and don't let any escape. Pay her back according to her works, according to all she has done, do to her. For she has been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. I researched this and I realized this is actually an almost direct quote from the book of Jeremiah. I just can't remember where. But it is also a direct quote about one city, one nation. The woman riding on the back of the whore with blasphemous words written on her forehead, holding a golden cup, none other than Mystery Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18, where it talks about the destruction of an end-time nation that sheds the blood of the prophets, that sheds the blood of of the saints. And there's so many people out there saying, oh, but America isn't sitting on seven hills and whatever and everything, and we're not sitting on the waters. And yet the scripture says right there that one of the identifiers of Mystery Babylon is that she will be a melting pot in which all peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations have conglomerated, have aggregated to live and formed one very confused country. The information is right there. But for the sake of pride and for also the sake of articles that men who have died before I was born, because of the articles that they wrote that people have read and passed on and said, oh, this is canon. It's not canon. It's not canon. It's the teaching of someone who was not adequately informed by the Spirit of the Lord and they died. And you're clinging to what they said simply because you're so proud or you're so patriotic, which is the same thing. You're so proud that you can't fathom that God would be mad enough to punish the nation that the Bible actually calls the hammer of the whole earth. Read the book of Jeremiah, United States. Read Jeremiah. You're all over it. 
You just need the humility to see it. You will understand who you are and where you are, who we are and where we are. And then you might be moved to repent. And then you might be saved. But the scripture says, make this people dull. Make them dull of hearing and blind them so that they cannot see because I am seeking an opportunity to destroy them. And so as a nation, we remain dull, blind, deaf, denying to the last. It's not us. can't be us. Israel does the same thing. Russia does worse. God says to tell you that Russia is coming and China is coming. I barely watch the news because it's so inaccurate. It is so wildly inaccurate. And I can't express, expect newscasters to be prophets, but good grief. Talk about the Pied Piper. Talk about a looky-loop. The boogeyman is there and they insist on pointing you that way. And in that way, a tiger, a puma will strike you from that end. Here are the scriptures. For out of the north, a nation comes up against her, which will make her land desolate. And no one shall dwell therein. They shall remove, which means to all move, to move away, to go away. They shall depart, both man and beast. Jeremiah 50 and verse 3. For behold, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be captured. Their arrows will be like those of an expert warrior. None of their arrows will, me will miss, will return in vain. And Chaldea shall become plunder. All who plunder her shall be satisfied, says the Lord. Isaiah 50, verse 9 and 10. Waste and utterly destroys them, says God. And do according to all that I have commanded you. A sound of battle is in the land, a sound of great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth has been cut apart and broken. How Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. I have laid a snare for you. You have indeed been trapped, O Babylon, and you were not aware. You have been found and also caught because you fought against the Lord. Isaiah 50 and verse 21 to 24. So I think about it. I think I'll end the prophecy here. It's the end of the prophecy anyway. Please read Jeremiah 50 and 51, Revelation 17 and 18. These are scriptures that I have received since 2012 until now concerning the nation of America. Whether you agree that America is mystery Babylon or not, understand your opinion is second. God's is first. I'll stop there. Thank you for being with me. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. I'll be back with another video, but until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.